We're at Evan Field in Kohler, Wisconsin, where Tenali KLC hosts last year's conference championship championship team, uh, Cedar Grove, Belgium. Alongside the coach, Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin. Chris, uh, it looks on paper to be an unbalanced uh, matchup here tonight. Uh, last year, uh, Cedar Grove, Belgium just missed winning the state title. They took it to the state championship game and lost. Uh, KLC made the playoffs, but uh, they don't seem to be quite the team that Cedar Grove Belgium is. No, and Cedar Grove's been a powerhouse in the league for a number of years now. Uh, coach Zablocki, who now coaches this KLC team, used to coach that team and, and uh, took them to state as well. So you're talking about, you know, the premier of the conference. Uh, I was thinking about this, you know, all week. You know, oh, we got an early game. My gosh, it's gorgeous out here, and it's early August, and I think the best time to catch a team is early because maybe they're not as crisp as they could be maybe in, in the middle of September or going in October. The catch is, oh, are you ready? That's the catch. Is KLC ready to, to you know, for the, the early season? If you're going to play a team, you know, that's that successful, maybe get them early. P.J. Elmendorf will be at the controls for uh, KLC. You know, how he plays obviously makes a big difference. But uh, looking at it from your standpoint, standpoint is who's going to be ready. I think it depends on the defense of KLC. Yeah, they are. And, you know, Cedar Grove, uh, just looking to the experience for Kohler's a little light, too. They only, I believe, have 11 seniors and four juniors. Where you're a very strong program in, in 10 seniors and about 15 juniors for for Cedar Grove. So, yeah, that hurley hitting, and are you going to be able to hit hit them and are you know do you know the tendencies uh you had to open against this team a year ago so hopefully you, you know you you looked at some tape from last year and the kids are ready for that the other thing in talking to the klc coaches they have seven starters on offense that are also going to be playing on defense so having those two-way players uh, maybe not early on but down the stretch that could hurt them yeah, and we'll see, you know, another thing I was thinking about that, too, is kids that play both ways, especially in, in these these smaller division, things like that. But we'll watch for the officials. They'll probably take a water break. It seems like what happened last year as well, something to, you know, to, to help the kids out. It doesn't seem very warm. I mean, it's about 75 degrees, but the humidity is a thing that's going to yeah, get them. Even now we do that when we play tennis. It seems like it's cool down by the lake, but we still sweat too, and, and we're a little, uh, we don't have all that equipment like these kids do. That's right. That'll make the difference is the equipment uh, and the humidity being up real high. Uh, so they're definitely going to give them some breaks. We've seen it last year, like you said. We'll definitely see it tonight, that's for sure. Uh, Cedar Grove Belgium was 8-0 last year in conference. They want to keep that winning streak going. Of course, KLC wants to break that streak. Yeah, KLC was just, I believe, 4-4 four and four in league, and then they played a non-conference game against Lamira, and we were at that game out at Lakeland, and Lamira from a different conference just came and clocked them a little bit. Uh, but because of the playoff system and things are, because they were 500 in league play, they still got in the playoffs, and then they ran into uh, Keel, who was the conference champion over there as well. So... Uh, it's, it's, you never know what's going to happen. It's the beginning of the year. There's new new kids out there, as you said. Elmendorf's now the quarterback. I believe he played flanker or something a year ago. You had Joel <laughs> Bugby as a as a quarterback. So a uh, new quarterback and a new system and new running back. Uh, so. Elmendorf is a name that we're familiar with. I think there were some Elmendorfs <laughs> that played at South a few years back. So uh, And they were good football players over at South. So I think the, this Elmendorf is going to be the same. We're going to step out. When we come back, we'll have the national anthem. And then we also have a new little uh, twist to our announcing. It's called uh, Marty Needs a Minute. <laughs> so you'll want to stick around and listen to that. Thank you. We'll only need these if they win. Uh, press and hold. Wow. Yeah. These are really good. You act surprised. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's consent. Because sex without it 
isn't sex. It's rape. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. And to follow the swimming rules. You're always looking out for me and trying to keep me safe. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? Here in the garage. Closet. Shoe box under the bed. Where anyone can get to it. How safe is that? How safe is that? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules. Now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. If you own a firearm and are not using it, please be responsible and be sure that it's stored in a safe place. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And, and if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? Ugh. Wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah. I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Uh, texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi Fi here. sung by Leilani Van Aston and Kately Robley. Thank you, girls. And now, our visitors tonight, the coaching staff for Cedar Grove, Belgium, have requested we introduce their team as a team. So here are the Rockets. something that throughout the summer, well not throughout, but a couple times during the summer, you know, about the uh, early start to the season. Uh,
This is a dandy, that's for sure. Uh, we spent a couple of game KLC games out at Lakeland because this was not quite done yet. Uh, well, it is now, and it looks uh, really, really nice. The Rockets will be kicking off to uh, KLC back deep is uh, Bobby Hill and it looks like almost an onside kick taken up to about the 39 yard line on the kickoff return. That was by uh, Grabowski. Elmendorf ducks under center, number 25. Drops back, rushed hard, but uh, gets the pass off and it's complete. That one going to uh, Gar Graydon Grabowski on a nice pitch and catch. Yeah, 13 yard pickup on that play. Inside handoff, right through the middle. Goes the running back by Carter Knuth. Good run there. It's gonna be second and two. Ball spotted right on the 40 yard line. Good start here for KLC, a couple of first downs. Let's see what they can do on second and two. Fake, little out pattern over the outstretched hands of the wide receiver. That was their uh, tight end, Beneshek. Yeah, keep it simple. With uh, the kind of rush that uh, the Rockets can give you, you gotta get the ball out quick. There you get a good shot of the line and uh, Elmendorf ducking under center, blitz coming, inside handoff, and we get a first down. Knuth again on the carry. Picks up, see where they're gonna spot the ball at the 36, that would be a seven, six yard pickup. First and 10. Yeah, make that a four yard pickup, Chris. Ball spotted on the 36 yard line. Just beginning action, we're in the first quarter. Elmendorf, way over his intended receiver, Grabowski. You know, if that was a little too low, that one might have been intercepted. Flag thrown, we'll have to see what that's all about. Holy cow, where'd that come from? Yeah, exactly. Ball is spotted at the uh, 21 yard line. 
15 yarder. Fake inside, handoff off a left tackle, and Knuth doing a good job of running the ball up the middle. Six yard pickup on that makes it second down and four. Faked it to the first back going up the middle and then handed it off to the second back off the left tackle. That's some good blocking out to the wing. Knuth's a deep back in this formation. Again, uh, cross, no, they faked it. Elmendorf avoids a couple of tackles, but he's gonna get hit back at the 20-yard line for a loss of five. No, you're right, they didn't go for the fake. Big third down play. You don't want to do is get hit for another loss. Could take you out of field goal range. High formation in the backfield. Give it off to the second back and he's hit for a loss of a yard. Knuth on the carry. Pardon me, that was Ramagoni, number six. Ramagoni is a pretty fast kid. The problem with uh, Nickith is that he's very small. You get an arm on him, you can pull him down. Split backfield, two wide receivers, Elmendorf. You get a timeout that's going to go on KLC. We have uh, 7.45 left in the first quarter. No score. KLC was on the move until uh, this set of downs. I would think that uh, I would think that uh, Cedar Grove knows they like to go to Grabowski, big number 88. So uh, they'll pay some some attention to him. If you're the defensive coach for uh, the Rockets, what do you do? Blitz or play it? Uh, Their uh, base defense is uh, four, two, five. A couple of linebackers. Anzia is the one name that was mentioned. Draw play, wide open. He's not going to get the throw. He avoids a tackler. Gets down inside the ten to the nine. Eleven yard pickup. That could be a first and goal. Twelve yard pickup. Excellent call. Inside handoff off a right guard left guard. Knuth on a short carry. Short gain, pardon me. Picks up maybe one or two. Second and goal. Ooh, good point, Chris. That's an excellent point. 
your best defense is your offense. Second and goal, no, no uh, gain on that. Second back through, almost a fumble on the handoff. Ramagoni able to hang on to it, however. Picks up a couple. It's going to be third and goal. Those rockets, boy, they'll hit you, that's for sure. Elmendorf lets it go and he runs into the defensive back. No flag, they're calling it an incomplete pass. Tough break on that. I always like it if you have a kicker because you know what you can do later on in the game? You can fake, fake off the kick. Once you show them you don't have a kicker, it uh, makes that play very difficult. Wide receivers are split way out. Elmendorf have his room. He fires it over the middle and low, but it bounces incomplete. And Cedar Grove, Belgium stops him. It's a great opening drive though. And they pinned them back deep too, Chris. It's at the eight yard line. You have to go 92 yards. Cedar Grove, Belgium running from the uh, shotgun. Acevedo on the first carry. He picked up about four yards on the play. Novice number seven at the controls, takes a snap, he keeps it. Heads off a left tackle. Picks up a couple, not a great deal of yardage on that carry. KLC doing a good job on the defensive end. They're spotting the ball at the nine yard line. We'll give him a gain of three. Novice takes a snap, he's rolling right, looking down the field, now he tucks it under, it stops and throws, the left-hander has his man at the 32-yard line, making the 33 for a first down. Side handoff. Oh, fumble. Scramble for the ball. Cedar Grove has it outside the 40 yard line. Jensis on the carry. First and 10. Pitch out to the left. Oh. Good hard running by that running back. That was Acevedo. (laughs) 
Nice pickup that time by Acevedo. Did some real hard running. It's first and 10 ball on the uh, KLC 49 yard line. Novice on a fake. Left hander looking, now he tucks it in and runs. He's gonna have the first down and more before he's knocked out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Twenty-two yard gain by Novice. Second time out by uh, KLC. Chris Sablocki needs to get the uh, defensive side of the ball playing. That uh, third down down there on the long pass when uh, Novice tucked it under Chris like he was going to run. Breakdown. We have three minutes and 24 seconds left in the first quarter, no score. KLC had a nice long drive. We're stopped inside the 10. Cedar Grove, Belgium got the ball back and they've been uh, pretty relentless in marching the ball down the field. They've uh, hit on one third down pass for 19 yards. Other than that, it's been all runs. Novice in the shotgun takes it. Hands it off to Acevedo, their hard runner. He puts his head down and barrels down to the 20. Second down and three. Acevedo again gets it near the first down. See in the line, uh, Cedar Grove has uh, Daniels, 17, Ebers, 59. Find 67, Dunk 68, Dodson 74. They've been doing a job so far. Good block on the wing by Acevedo. Sprung novice loose, he's knocked down at about the five yard line. I don't know if we can get a replay of that, but Acevedo threw a good block on the edge. First and goal, ball spotted on the six yard line. Eight yard line. The left hander novice rolling. Had a receiver out there but overshot him. Brad Cotty was the intended receiver. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you're right, exactly. Dan Screws, the head coach over at uh, Cedar Grove, Belgium. Uh, thank him for helping me out with uh, pronunciations and uh, getting some of the people that are playing a lot. Oh, nice jump pass by Novice, and he's got his wide receiver for the touchdown.
think that was Cotty, Chris. They're calling it the Ford. Ford is number 15. Extra point is up and good. That one by, by the quarterback, Novice. brings us together and adds flavor to life. That's why it's important to wash hands, surfaces, and fresh produce. Keep raw meat, poultry, and seafood separate from ready-to-eat foods like fruits and vegetables. And cook to proper temperatures using a food thermometer. Enjoy! Refrigerate leftovers within two hours. For more tips on safely preparing foods, visit homefoodsafety.org. We're back at Eben, Eben Field in Kohler where uh, Cedar Grove has just scored with a minute 40 left. Another squibber uh, picked up at the 20 yard line and bunching forward or lunging forward up to the uh, 29 is the return man, Grabowski. Chris, two times in a row, you gotta think the kicker's maybe not that great. <laughs> well, I think they got what they wanted there, a funny hop, because I don't understand any other reason to, other reason to do, do it that. Do it that way, right? Elmendorf under center, inside handoff again. And a stop is made at about the 30 yard line. Maybe a gain of one. Making the stop that time was a uh, kid that uh, Coach Screws had mentioned early on. Uh, Avion, second down and nine. Little jump pass, almost intercepted. Not quite able to come up with it was uh, Matt Poole. Well, that was the first play of the game, Marty, and uh, they decided to uh, try that again, but Cedar Grove was ready for it, kind of like uh, Tremont Williams yesterday. Kind of jumped that first route. Third down and nine. You don't like these long third down plays, Chris, against uh, a team like Cedar Grove, Belgium. Where are they coming from? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the problem. Anzia, number 10, is one of the middle linebackers. Look out for him. He's a good one. Elmendorf, a little handoff on a delay. Another big opening and just tripped up was the running back, Knuth. And you called it, Marty. It was almost like it was set up. Anzia came up the gap, blitzed, and guess where the runner went? Right into that gap. So you almost uh, like predicted that, Marty. Almost. <laughs> Watch Anzia, and so I did. <laughs> and he shot right past Anzia. Knuth did. Yeah, you got to play a little more discipline than that. Knuth in motion, pitch out to the right and uh, fumble. No, they're going to say the runner was down and uh, runner is shaking up, not bouncing right up. Ramagoni 
on the carry. And it was a loss of four when all was said and done. Oh, he's up. There. Maybe got the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, he got uh, hit pretty hard. And you know, he's not a big guy, Chris. So when he gets hit, boy, he feels it. It was a four yard loss. You know, at some point, that little draw play, it's not gonna work anymore. You gotta, you well, that was get a that was a pitch, and uh, they were. No, out I don't there. mean that one. I meant the play before. Oh, yeah. You know, where you got the first down. Yeah. You, know, you get third and fourteen. They're not going to be biting on that anymore. <laughs> That's right. I see what your point is. Yep, exactly. Got to find something else besides that play. <laughs> yeah, something else that works. And that's going to be the quarter, Marty. And that is the end of the first quarter, with Cedar Grove on top, seven to nothing. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning is 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash, 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be. Going for uh, Graydon Grabowski, but uh, Acevedo almost made the interception. It's going to be third down and 14. Like the call. Would have liked the call on the other end in the first quarter. Uh, looking at your stats, Marty, uh, the rushing game for uh, KLC is after those first couple of hits where they made some big yards, it's kind of been stifled. <laughs> yeah, they didn't uh, get a whole lot there. Uh, Ramagoni's having a tough go of it so far tonight. Canoe seems to have a little success. Yes, he did. He runs pretty hard. Third down and 14. They're not going with the draw. Another deep pass right into the middle of the coverage of uh, Cedar Grove, Belgium, but it was overthrown. Nobody could get to that. It's going to be fourth down and 14. Well, that was disappointing because you got good up front blocking that time from the line. I mean, you know, a rare chance against uh, Cedar Grove, Belgium there to... Uh, complete a pass, but you had two guys basically going to the same area, but there was three white shirts there too. Not uh, disappointing on that one too. Yeah, Acevedo and uh, Emperly are the uh, two players back. Grabowski on the punt, gets a good one off, takes a bounce at the 25 and it's taken on the 20. And uh, taken down is not Acevedo, but uh, Brad Cotty. Cotty on the return. Trying to stock on the stop from Kohler. Go, 
going to be first and 10 for the Rockets. Ball spotted on the 30-yard uh, line. They had a pretty good goal of it on their one first quarter drive. Nav is still at quarterback. Drops back, looking, 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 forced out of the pocket and grabbed and thrown down at the 26-yard uh, line. Didn't catch a number of that defender. Caleb Geese on the play, Marty. Number 78, the senior from Lutheran. Nice play. I thought Navis was gonna get away there. Pitch out. Wow. Good running start by Acevedo. He gets it all the way up to the 35, a nine yard pickup. The Rockets do well once they get outside the tackles, Marty. Yeah, you're yeah. Next. They're quick out there. But here we go again. We got a third down, and we're going to call it five or six. Yeah. Can you get off the field if you'd have gotten off the field on the first possession? You wouldn't have scored. Yep. So. Right, novice in the shotgun again. That's how it's been. No wide receiver. The ball is dropped. He picks it up, and he's not going to be able to get rid of it. He's tackled at the 25-yard line. That's where they spotted Chris. That's a 10 yard loss. That's where they're gonna put it down. I think Knuth made that play and hey, mistake by Cedar Grove. Good job. Should be pretty good field position for the Pioneers, as they're called now, KLC. Bobby Hill, oh, bad kick, and it's caught oh. at the 35-yard line, a 10-yarder. <laughs> oh, make it. It's only a 9-yarder, Chris. He's got it at the 36. What, what a play world. by Stock to be <laughs> aware of what was going on. The snag that went out of the... You know, not to complain, but that actually is kind of a dangerous play. Great field position. <laughs> why would you? Uh, yeah. Why would you uh, not take that? Exactly. Uh, that was a nine-yarder, Chris. You got enough room to write that nine down. I got it down. Let's see if KLC can take advantage of the short yeah, field. Great field position. No wide receivers this time. The line is tight. Fake by Elmendorf. And he throws it. He's got a man open and he can't hang on to the ball. That was Carter Knuth. That was a nice play to run that out of there. Everyone thought they were going to keep it on the ground, but... Nice safe pass. Unfortunately, Knuth couldn't hang on. Second down and 10. 9.37 left until halftime. It's only seven to nothing. KLC has uh, picked it up, especially on the defensive side since that uh, long Cedar Grove drive in the first quarter. Elmendorf under center. We got one wide receiver split out. Elman Knuth in motion. Crossing motion. And the pass is incomplete, but we got a penalty. Yep. I think that's going to be on number nine, Brad Cotty. Had his hand on the receiver's back. Going to call holding on Cedar Grove. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot gives them a first down. 
Make it first and 10, ball spotted on the 26. Well, they're gonna make it the 24. Even though the pass was from the 26. No. Right up the middle. Fumble, ball's rolling around. Looks like Cedar Grove has it. Well, you gotta hang on to the ball. They're gonna call him down, Marty. That's the right call. I was wondering when it squirted away if they were gonna call that down and that was the right play. It's the right call. Gain a one, makes it second down and nine. Ball on the 23. Matt Stefani in the backfield, number one. Got him. He's got him and he makes a catch. Graydon Grabowski on a great leaping grab for a touchdown from 23 yards out. Thought that's what they should have ran when they were down here on the eight. Backfield number one. But this time uh, they run it here from got three outs. He's got him and he makes a catch. Oh, that was a dandy. And what are we gonna do here, Chris? Going for two, no kicker. It's wide open again. Oh, he's wide open. Can he get the ball to him? Yes, he can. That catch is made again by Grabowski. And wide now, oh, he's wide open. KLC. Can he get the ball? <laughs> KLC's got the lead, eight to seven. 8.39 left until halftime. Well, they took advantage, Marty, of the short field. Big play on defense was the uh, fumble by uh, Cedar Grove, and then they were sacked, forced a punt. And uh, we mentioned Trent Stock snagged the punt out of the air and it only went nine yards and uh, and in a minute four seconds 35 yards later or so points are on the board and now we'll see what uh, KLC decides to do if they're gonna kick it down it's their first kickoff of the season Elmendorf having a tough quarter, Chris. One for four, but the one was a good one, and then he threw the completion in the end zone for the two-point conversion. Normally, sometimes you put your extras in on the kickoff with team, but you look at Cedar Grove. They got some meat, meat in their first nine guys. Another ground ball rolling down, picked up at the 19. Looking for an the outside and can't get there. He's ripped down. Good tackle that time. I think that was made by uh, the freshman, Matthew Stefani. Stefani on the, on the tackle. They're calling him Stephanie, so we will too. First and 10 for Cedar Grove. Ball on the 19 yard line. Brad Cotty was uh, the return man. He couldn't uh, get to the outside. He did pick up a nice block, but uh, too many KLCers. Novice on the handoff, right up the middle. I think that was Acevedo. It was. Let's see if uh, Cedar Grove spends a little more time on the ground. They're picking up big chunks, rushing the ball. Let's see if they keep it on the ground. Ball spotted on the 26 yard line. Novice on the inside handoff. 
on the loose is uh, Chris Gentius on a nice carry. Yeah, they're just pushing, pushing that front, creating big holes. Like I said, if I was Cedar Grove, I would uh, not put it up in the air until I have to. Well, they got those big horses in the line, Chris. You might as well use them. Yeah, and they're quick. They're quick off the line, Marty. Yeah. They're really quick. They create quick, quick jerkies, you know, openings. Gentris on the carry again, uh, not nearly as much this time, maybe uh, one or two. It's gonna be second down, I'm gonna gain a three. All right, Let's see what they do here. Let's get, get in our stop here, force them to throw. Novice. Pitch on a wide. Pitch out hold. to the left. There's a nice a good hold. fill that time. Coming up to help make the stop with Grabowski was uh, Culver coming over. Ford, who scored the touchdown earlier, Marty got away with a hold. Good contain. That's what KLC needs to do. I, I'm very worried about the outside once Kale or Cedar Grove gets out there. So that was a much better job. Tight formation by the Rockets, Chris. A fake handoff, Navas taking it off right end. Outside, he got outside. Oh, yes, he did. Just no contain, they gotta contain. Don't get a penalty throwing him out of bounds. That was a very nice run. A little uh, dip on the inside, and then he took it to the outside. Great run, it's gonna be first and 10 for the Rockets. There's 6.13 left in the half. Ball spotted on the 44 yard line. 13 yard run. Look at the linebackers for KLC, Chris. They're almost five yards back. Yeah, but that's okay. They're trying to keep the outside contained. Inside handoff, yeah. Acevedo Guess where they go goes right up the middle and he's knocked down right at the 30. Yeah. Give him 14 yards on that pick. I don't mind the outside contain, but then the, the meat has to be up a little bit more. And uh, again, the front five are burying the defensive line right now for uh, KLC. Again, they don't need to throw the ball if you can't stop the run. Brad Cotty's the wide receiver out here to the left. Can't imagine him throwing the ball. Second back through Acevedo, puts his head down and barrels over the uh, KLC tackler. That was uh, Knuth trying to make the tackle but couldn't. Second and short. Pick up of about seven yards on that play. We're down to five and a half minutes in the half. Acevedo had 20, 21 yards in the uh, First half, Chris. First quarter, pardon me. Got him. Oh, they got him in the backfield. Much that better. was Gentius. Not going anywhere that time. It's going to be third down. Loses a yard. Third down and four, ball spotted on the 24. Keep your eye on Novice. He's been uh, money on these third down plays. Fake, Novice still has it, rolling left, throwing. Got his wide receiver and knocked down at about the 11 yard line. Making the catch for Cedar Grove was uh, to Max Ford. Okay, the ball is at the 11, so it's going to be first and 10 at the 11. First and 10 at the 11-yard line. 13-yard pickup. That was the first pass completion in the quarter for uh, Cedar Grove. 
Second back through, Acevedo puts his head down but doesn't get much, maybe a yard or two. Nice play again by Trent Stock, having a nice half, number 51. Now Cedar Grove can get a first down. Thirty-eight yards in the quarter so far for Acevedo on five carries, having a nice half. Novice on a handoff to Acevedo. He's got blocking in front of him. Yeah. And barrels down inside the five. Just a nice little stretch play there, Marty, with a lot of white shirts leading the way. But uh, Acevedo now. Time out, we got a man down. It looks like it's uh, Alex Acevedo, their uh, top-notch running back. <laughs> Apparently he doesn't have a back injury. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Ball is being spotted on about the three yard line, Chris. Alex Acevedo is up and trotting off the field, and that's a great thing. Never like to see anyone get hurt. Trainers from both sides coming out to uh, help. A big third down play, Chris. It's third down and two from the three yard line. Ben Anzi, a defensive player, is in the backfield for Acevedo. Looks like he was in motion, no call. And barreling into the end zone was Gentius for the touchdown. I'd like to see, well, caught it a little bit too late, but uh, certainly looked like the uh, other back was in motion, but... Uh, Maybe not. Referees didn't call it. It's 13 to eight, Cedar Grove, Belgium, with 3.15 left in the half. They are gonna go for two. And Acevedo is back in, Chris, right behind uh, Novice. And alongside those two is uh, Chris Gentius, who just scored the touchdown. No wide receivers in this set. Fake, novice rolling, he's gonna run it, and he gets in. Got the edge and took it in for two points. Some KLC's gotta clean up that outside edge yeah. is right. Gotta keep the contain. That makes it 15 to eight, Cedar Grove, Belgium. And once they get out there, it's, it's tough, tough sledding for uh, KLC, that was a six minute and 22 second drive to respond after the uh, KLC score. Wow. You know, some games, Chris, my uh, score sheets, they run past the 40 play mark. <laughs> a lot of running tonight. Oh yeah. I always have extra lines left. They're not bashful about using novice, that's for sure. Yeah, he's good. And you gotta like those left-handed quarterbacks. Good point. Tell you, Cedar Grove traveled well here. Their parent section or fan section is loaded. And uh, I guess when you have success like you do. That helps. Yeah, they've taken the stands away from the opposite field and they put the students in the end zone. A wobbly kick and it takes a nice bounce. Oh, and the ball is popped out 
recovered by KLC at about the 31. Man, a life. That ball just went flying. So, and, uh, busy last night, so I taped the Packer game. There was a ball like that <laughs> that hit a receiver and ricocheted back about <laughs> 25 yards. Or as uh, James Lofton said, it was a 35-yard pass and it ricocheted off his shoulder pad and came back 25 yards. That's kind of what it reminded me of, the way it boinked back. All righty, here we go, Elmendorf under center. Gives it to the first back through. Takes it up to about the 32 or 33 yard line, a short gain. Gonna be second down. A noose on the run. Number three, Bobby Hill in. Lutheran product. Junior. Second down and about eight. And uh, he looks to be the quarterback. Hill number three. Hill, okay. Oh, and he slips out of his hand and he pounces on it back at about the 23. That's uh, very unfortunate. Welcome to the game. Yeah, really. And that was <laughs> your debut and your exit. See ya. Gonna give him the ball back at the uh, 24. Just a, oh no, he's back in just getting the play. It's unfortunate. Interesting changing quarterbacks here. Mar uh, Elmendorf's on the sidelines here. Oh yes he is. Hopefully nothing's wrong with that young man, but they were moving pretty well. Yeah, it's uh, third and 17, Chris. Hill, keeper, bounces it to the outside before he's finally tackled at about the 31, which is the original line of scrimmage. And right away, Cedar Grove, Belgium calls a timeout. There's a 133 left. That was real slow moving for Hill. I didn't think he was gonna get anything. And next thing you know, he found a little opening. Got some of the yardage back that he had lost. Yes. And now we have an injured player too. This one's for Cedar Grove as well. And this, you know, you wonder, like I said, we haven't had any of those water breaks, which I thought they might call. You I think I, a lot, I don't know this for sure, Chris, but I would think, you know, as you're out there on the field and you're watching the kids play, you get a sense of what's going on. And if, if they don't feel like it's necessary, they're not yeah. going to just yeah. all of a sudden do it. You I know, they got to feel a need for it. Well, with I don't know, just the WIA and the way they do things now and everything's safety and my gosh, it's so much protect kids. One of the ideas that I have down has to do with the WIA. The next time we do this, it's gonna be Chris needs a minute. <laughs> okay, and you can develop your gripe or whatever you think about my the gripe. WIA. <laughs> or gripes. <laughs> I just, uh, it's not really a gripe. It's just, I know that they they emphasize safety a lot. Oh, and yeah, and that's a good thing. There's yeah, nothing so wrong with water that. water breaks and things and there has been some injuries so there has been opportunities for the water to come out which maybe leads to your, yeah, your situation. Well, and you hear about what happened at uh, some of the college football yep. programs you know and uh, making it seem like there was something wrong if you got a drink. Getting a lift off the field is a kid whose number we don't have on this program. What number do you have? 17 I believe it was. Chris Daniels. Chris Daniels. So this will be yep, I got him right here. He's a tight end. And now Cedar Grove is going to call that timeout and uh, hoping to get the ball back from a minute and a half. Here's your water break, Chris, in the form of a yep, timeout. Yep, yep. Our game, our game next week will be at uh, Sheboygan South when they host Bayport. It was all Bayport last night against uh, North up in uh, Bayport. Another strange year, Marty. I saw the schedule like North finishes with three home games. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I 
I don't understand this alternate. They never let that happen when you were coaching yeah. baseball. And I know they've got these <laughs> games on Thursdays, too, which is the next two weeks. Well, and I think that's part of, you know, this early season business. You know, you play it on a Thursday, and all the family's got a long weekend. Yep. You know, that kind of thing. But it, last night, like, ten teams played on Thursday. Like, most teams don't there play. There were a whole bunch of scores on the WIA website. Yeah, I know. I looked it up, but, I mean, it wasn't a lot of games compared to Fridays. And, uh, you know, another thing, you know, it just... I don't know. Friday night is football night. Good snap. Boot is away, and it uh, sails out of bounds right away. It's going to be a matter of where they're going to measure it. And that one side official is uh, oh. at inside the 40-yard line. Which I makes it where they're Oh, I see they got yards. it at the 49-yard line. 19-yard punt about. First punt was a lot better. Yeah, first punt I hit him for 34. Oh, we got a hanky on the field though. 10 yarder. And that can happen early in a season. Uh, hey, stop giving them a break. The kids are supposed to know the punt formation. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> What would you say you'd do if you were the head football coach? First one would be the victory formation. Yep. You're going to not yell at them because they didn't put seven guys <laughs> on the line? Come on. <laughs> I know, wow, these aren't grade school kids anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Novice rolling left. Throws I a dart in it right in and out of the hands of Acevedo. I'll tell you. Or was that he Cotty? Was, he was wide open. That was nine. That was uh, Cotty. Ford. Ford, Ford. Is, Ford is nine. I mean, Hill was not going to go up on him, get beat deep, and he was wide open for a long time. <laughs> Maybe that was the problem. Second down and 10. 122 left until halftime. On my novice getting forced out of the pocket, rolling. He's got Ford on that catch, and he's knocked down at the 45. Nice play, Grabowski. It's going to be third down and about six. Joe Conklin in there as well. Clock's rolling. Yep, under a minute. Which makes me think that they're gonna either heave it down there or uh, run one here and just accept the lead. Oop. Novice being rushed hard, drops way back, looking, throwing on the run. He's got his receiver for a first down. And that was Gentius making a nice catch and run. Novice with a good pass running against uh, his throw there. Ball is on the 32. Now Cedar Grove calls timeout. 33 seconds. First down, 10 ball on the 32. 33.6 seconds like uh, Chris said. Uh, Probably behoove you to stay with the pass, eh? Now it is. Now it is. Cedar Grove, Belgium will uh, take the second half kickoff. They started the game by kicking off. And uh, KLC had that nice first quarter drive all the way Back down field inside the 10. Got him. He's got him and he makes a catch. Great. That's our touchdown for KLC. Grabowski there. All righty. Open again. Oh, yeah, he's wide think. open. Can he get the ball to him? Yeah. Wide receivers left and right with a slot on the left side. Navas straight back looking, looking, fires deep. He's got a man wide open. Diving and making the wow. catch was Brad Cotty. Oh, that's Ford, I think, Marty, number nine. I got four is number 15. Maybe you got a different, you got an updated one now. Yep. 
Max Ford, who's number 15, Pfeiffer. What a play, what a catch. Put right over the middle. And that's a backbreaker. Yes, it is, for sure. That's a bad one. Ford's second touchdown. And they're lined up for two, Marty. Again. Right up the middle and in for the extra point is Acevedo. That hurts. Yeah, you can't let the deep ball go. And that's, uh, we were saying before, like I was watching Bobby Hill doing such a nice job containing. And that time, uh, obviously the backfield back there allowed some stuff to, to go and Oh boy. Hey, there's 26.7 seconds left. Don't make any mistakes now. It's going to halftime down the way you are, not anymore. Twenty-three to eight. This one for sure will be squibbed on the ground. Chris is right. Another squibber picked oh. up at the thirty, twenty-three, and then knocked down at the twenty-seven. Almost could have let that one roll out of bounds. I'm on KLC here, take a knee and couple plays difference, Marty. Yes. Couple plays. You got that right. First drive of the game, KLC came up a little bit short. Second drive of the game, KLC couldn't get off the field on a third and eight, led to a long drive. And uh, here you allow a 33 yard touchdown pass with uh, 26 seconds left. Hill still in the game, Chris. Ball spotted on the 27, first down. Let's see what uh, KLC elects to do. Hill dropping back, looking. Rainbow right into the coverage, but uh, overshoots everyone. Graydon Grabowski was the intended receiver. Seventeen point eight seconds left. Long time in the huddle for uh, KLC. What'd you say their nickname was, Chris? The Pioneers. Hill takes a snap, straight back. It's like the same play. We get bumping on the uh, edge between the wide receiver and the uh, defensive back, but no flag. Kind of interested what happened to Elmendorf while he's not out there. He led the uh, drive for score right before the. 12.1 uh, uh, seconds left, Chris. They might wind up having to almost punt the ball. And that you don't want to happen. You don't want the uh, Rockets coming at you. Sitting on the bench down in uh, front of us is uh, Nikith, Nikith Ragamoni. He must have gotten hurt on that one carry, Chris. Hill on the keeper. Gets out to the 30-yard uh, line. And uh, I think that's going to be it for the half. We are at halftime with uh, Cedar Grove Belgium on top, 23-8. to eight. Rockets 23, KLC 8. 
Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. What are you going to do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got skills, the smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me? Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by a tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? change the world. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. I dare you to be somebody important. Like be a teacher. Or a reality TV star. I dare you to stand up here. To call the shots. To be a role model. An inspiration. An innovator. To be a teacher. Think you can change my life? Make me excited about science like you. Have a career that really means something? Then do it. I dare you. Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. You're doing great. Let's just, we're gonna try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button to see. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep, keep pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier. And it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Hey, I'm Tyler Perry. Do you know what hunger in America looks like? Well, it has many faces, and 16 million of those belong to children. Yet billions of pounds of food go to waste each year, and this is unacceptable. You can be a part of the solution. Join us in supporting the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks, which rescues our surplus foods and provides meals to many families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org today. Together we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy, and giving up impossible. 
I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought, and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. Since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. All right. Yeah. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country. And as a parent, it's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger, especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together we can solve hunger. Together we're Feeding America. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry. Or bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. I... <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. OK, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? Winning. I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey. I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in. Because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Oh, look. A redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. <laughs> Got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. 
Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. They're coming. Places, everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Hi. May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Good. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. How much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat? One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. College, man. You and us. We go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to getschool.com. La 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 la. I love you so. I love you. I love you. La 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 la. La 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 la. We're here. Yeah. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat, write, or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. No? Whew. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. 
I discovered how to make healthier meals, and I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help, and slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains can cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Ah, Smokey! Only you can prevent wildfires. We're back at uh, Ebon Field in Kohler, getting ready to start the second half. We have some halftime stats. Cedar Grove, Belgium had a pretty good half offensively, finishing with 220 yards. 133 of those were from rushing. Uh, their leading ground gainer was Alex Acevedo with 65 yards. Uh, KLC not quite as good. They had 64 yards of total offense. 28 of those coming on uh, rushing, Chris, and most of those coming on that very first drive. Yeah, that's what's disappointing is they couldn't get the run game going. And uh, we talked about the pressure that, that uh, Cedar Grove is going to put on you. And uh, that's what they're doing right now. Uh, big plays, just big, big plays. You know, you can look at a, at a couple plays that maybe this game would be completely different. KLC had an opportunity to score on their opening drive and they came up on a fourth and eight and a little bit short. And then on the next ensuing drive, you forced Cedar Grove into a third and long and a wide open receiver caught a ball really low could have maybe not scored on that 92-yard drive. And then, of course, the big play at the end of the half, Marty, with 26 seconds left, uh, novice to Ford on a great catch. I'm not going to, you know, take the, the uh, anything away from Max Ford from Cedar Grove over the middle, but he was wide open and uh, was able to get under that ball and catch it. And that's why instead of it being maybe a one-score game, it's now a 15-point uh, deficit for KLC, and we'll see how they bounce back to start the second half. It all boils down to the defense. They need to uh, stop them on this first drive of the second half. Bobic uh, doing the kickoff duties. And a flag right away. It was eight to seven, too. You gotta remember yeah, that. Right. And the Pioneers was, had the lead. Yeah, with uh, 8.38 in the uh, first, second quarter, they took an 8-7 lead. We'll uh, try this kickoff again. We're going to march it five yards back on the offside. There we go. Line drive, oh, nice catch made right at the 40. Oh boy. And then turning their back and getting ridden down was uh, that receiver. That, uh, that was out. Logan Arrowwood. We've seen that a number of years here and it just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, you got great field position. The ball is marked at the 48. So they only need to go 52 yards well, on reverse, if you even stop them, Marty, you know, yeah, if they have to punt, right, you're, you're going to get it. You're going to have to go the length of the field. And the offensive line for the Rockets has done the job. 
Acevedo trying to get to the outside, and he's stopped. Nice tackle made on the edge. That's what you're gonna have to do to stop this Rockets offense is contain the outside, and right from the get-go, good job of coaching up at halftime because that went for naught. Second down and 11, keep an eye on Novice, number seven. These long yardage situations, they'd like to go to him. We have a wide receiver out here, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Emperly, inside handoff, first back through. Little or no gain there. Gentius on the uh, carry, picks up one. It's gonna be third and 10. Well, Chris, another one of these big plays that we talked about in the first half. The uh, safety hill is about 15 to 20 yards back. And we got a blitz. Novice rolling, throwing against his body, and it comes up short to uh, Ford. So pass incomplete. And that's a tough pass, as Marty mentioned, going across his body. And uh, just what the doctor ordered is an early punt for Cedar Grove. And we saw what happened last time, went just nine yards. You know, I think given this position on the field, you're not uh, very likely to see a fake punt either. Uh, Caden Fisher is the punter. Oh, bad snap. He's having trouble picking it up. He's going to try and run with it. He's not going to get much. Gets knocked down at the 35 KLC with great field position. Carter Knuth coming from the outside there. And a second consecutive special teams mistake on the punt unit for Cedar Grove. This is what you were talking about, Chris, at the beginning in the opening when you said, you know, teams are more susceptible to mistakes first game of the year, and this was one of them. KLC's got to capitalize on it. Stephanie in the backfield. And Elmendorf, the quarterback, hands it off to Stephanie. Knuth on the carry. Well, I saw this little situation about an hour ago when KLC got the kickoff and they were going this direction. They got a nice first run just like that one. Let's see if it can lead to a score this time, however. Tight line, no wide receivers in this set. Second back through. Anzia in the backfield making the stop right at the handoff point. Well, Marty, you mentioned him early tonight. Ben Anzia, gonna very give active. You're gonna give him one yard. It's gonna be third down and six. Good play by Anzia, however, sneaking through on the blitz. You yeah. don't like these long third downs, though. It's third and no. six is pretty long. Yeah, I think they're going to. This is a two down situation. Watch for our little flare out pass here. Nope. Inside handoff. The ball carrier gets uh, pushed back at right around the 20. Knuth on the carry. Yeah, they tried to go through that hole that was open earlier, but Cedar Grove has figured that one out a little bit. Sets up a fourth and about four, maybe five, long four. Long four is right. The draw play worked pretty good for them in the first half. We'll have to see if uh, the Rockets have caught on. Elmendorf in the uh, shotgun. Drops back, quick out, almost intercepted by A.J. Schaefer. Pass goes incomplete. Yeah, and that time they ran that cover too, and there was 
no place to put it. Earlier in the game, there was sing, single coverage out there. Not this time. Interesting start to the second half. Trotting in for uh, KLC is uh, John Putnam. Novice cont continues to be at quarterback for the Rockets. He's done a good job tonight. And uh, drag down there, making a nice stop was Putnam. Acevedo's being given two yards on the carry. Acevedo following his blockers. He had three of them out there and yep. he lunges forward to the 37. Maybe close to a first down. Hook on the mules and follow them. That's a good way to do it. <laughs> now if you stop them here, you're gonna force them to punt. Bobby Hill at safety in the middle. I don't think they're gonna pass it, Chris. Second back through and uh, Acevedo is tackled at the 40 and he's gonna be down at the 41. Very workmanlike first down for the Rockets. Just a little bit better. KLC wasn't bad, but the Rockets were just a half a foot better. We mentioned uh, Acevedo led all rushers with 65 in the first half. A good start to his second half. Oops. Uh, <laughs> There's that outside again, oh, Marty. Cutting it back is a Gentius, and uh, he has a nice gain all the way down to the 45 yard line. KLC being pushed around again, and again, outside contain. That's two plays in a row where the Rockets, well, not two out of three, but two out of the last three where the Rockets came to the outside. And it seemed like there was only one gray shirt. And there was a lot of blockers in front of that uh, gray shirt. Max Ford is the wide receiver right in front of us at the bottom of your screen. Gentius in motion, fake handoff to him. They give it to the second back through. And that's Acevedo. That rocket line creating those small holes I mentioned earlier, they get a nice jump. Quick jump in the beginning, just a little push. Backers go right through that little hole. We're gonna get, we're gonna get a plane that comes right over our field, Marty. Just don't land. <laughs> Novice all alone in the backfield. Gentius in motion, fake to him. Novice keeps it right up the middle. He's got a first down and he's dragged down inside the 35 yard line. They're rolling now, Chris. Yeah, and they're getting that pushed. And again, why throw it? That was uh, Mike Novice's first carry of the second half. Results in a seven yard gain and a first down. Second back through Acevedo from his uh, halfback spot avoids being tackled and gets it down to the 20 yard line. Yeah. Not doing a good job of tackling though no. either. No. Now they're starting to wear them. Ball is spotted at the 21, it's a 12 yard pickup. They're starting to get it in bunches. Yep. And they're just uh, well, this run, is why, run, run. Well, this is why they're conference champs. Yep. Boy, a lot of fumble. And he's knocked for a loss back outside the 25 yard line. They're gonna mark it right at the 25. Grabowski 
knocks him down, picks him up. Good. He's not only a good wide receiver, he's a good tight end. Uh, pardon me, defensive end. 6'3", 170 senior from Sheboygan Lutheran. You know, he'll be out on the basketball court. Coach for Hagen. Second down and 14. Coach Verhagen working the sidelines with the chain game. Novice a little jump on his pass and the ball is knocked away. Intended for Gentius, but uh, nobody could come up with it. It's going to be third down. A little surprised by that play. Down to 421 for number three. On a great night. This is uh, one of the good reasons maybe for having yeah. early football. Yeah. Novice has got an opening. He picks up a nice block from Gentius. Cuts it back at the 10, and he's in for a touchdown. Good block by Chris Gentius at about the 13 or 14 yard line, and that's sprung. Mike Novice for the touchdown. We get a replay of that watch number. Yeah, it's too late again. Couldn't see the block. But again, out trust me, it was there. And outside, nobody here, nobody home. And a wide open area. Novice had a choice to tuck it under a run, but when it's so wide open, and we've seen that a couple times tonight, you might as well just tuck it under and run and with his speed. Hanky on the field, Marty. Kick is good, but uh, on the snap, a flag went down. I got a feeling it's probably a illegal formation. Or maybe lined up offside. Huh. They finally were listening to me. <laughs> I gave him a couple options. You know, he could have called offside or illegal formation. Isn't it really nice, Chris, to be working with a partner that knows what he's talking about? Oh, yeah. Well, I've known that for <laughs> over 20 years. It hasn't been that long. About 96 or oh, so. Oh, yeah. It's a long time. By the way, how's your soda? <laughs> good. A re-kick is up and good, too. Gentius has a good leg. <laughs> With 4.13 left in the third quarter, it's uh, Cedar Grove, Belgium, 30, KLC, 8. Well, next week we'll be at South. We mentioned that. And for you KLC fans, they, I believe they go on the road next week. They go over to Oostburg, so they'll be playing next Friday, and yeah, there's a good shot of the sun, or the sun, the moon. That's not much of a road trip. Nope. Uh, Cedar Grove, Belgium will be at uh, Michicot next week. We mentioned about uh, KLC at Oostburg. Um, look forward to bringing you that. That's uh, going to be a tough uh, game for South. Bayport uh, appears to be uh, pretty good football team. Well, we've had all ground balls on the kick. It's, uh, haven't gotten any in the air. There's a little one, Chris. Taken at the 15, Bobby Hill. Jukes to the outside and gets it outside the 25. Hill does a little more, you know, when he was quarterback too, he seems to do a little more reading as opposed to just kind of running. Yeah, exactly. You know, instead of just going and hitting the hole, he's more of a reader. And every time he does it though, he does seem to get some yards. So I don't uh, discredit his idea, but it's just sometimes when you wait like that, the pursuit comes a little quicker. It's going to be uh, first and 10. The ball is put down at the 29-yard line. 
Elmendorf uh, back in at quarterback like he was earlier in the quarter. Hill finished off the half at quarterback. We're not sure why that happened. Second back through. Not much there. The ball carrier was Carter Knuth. He picked up a yard. Second down and nine. Boy, oh, it'd be nice to get a long play, you know, get down on the other end of the field. Elmendorf straight back, looking over the middle. He's got his receiver, Grabowski, puts his head down, and he's tackled at about the 48. Well, there was a nice play, Marty. He asked for a kind of a downfield play. That wasn't so bad, 15 yards. Boy, the momentum today. There you see the replay. It's just been swung back and forth, 23 to 8. And KLC was coming down to possibly to score something that they couldn't convert. And then uh, Cedar Grove goes down and score and kind of deflated, I think, KLC after that. There's been some, again, big plays tonight to just one or two plays in this game would be a lot closer than the scoreboard indicates. Yeah, exactly. First back through, Knuth gets it out to about the uh, 47. Again, another nice run. Knuth ducks under center, takes the snap, gives it to the first back through. And uh, not getting much was the ball carrier number 80. <laughs> we don't have his name. 80 for them. Zach Zimpleman. That's their Number 80. Oh, this is our 80? Yeah. Oh, boy. Pick up of about four on the play. He's a good runner. You should give him the ball more. Elmendorf looking, looking, looking. Throws off his back foot, and it goes incomplete. Good defensive play that time by uh, Tyler Kolakowski. Good football play there. Nice rollout. Nice pass. Good deflection by the defense. I was thinking great football name. <laughs> huh, I don't get this. The pass attempt was from about the 48, and now they put it down at the 50. And it was incomplete, right? Yep. Oh, well. Everybody's happy. Fourth down. Oh, no. Jumping offside was Luke Novice. About 15 minutes ago, I was thinking about what a clean game. There hasn't been a lot of flags today, which is... That makes you awfully happy. Oh, yeah. And uh, for it being early on. And and that makes the decision different for KLC as they are going to now send out the punting unit. The other novice is the punter. I think that's Luke Novice. That's a good one. Drives the receiver back and he drops it out of bounds at the 17-yard uh, line. So 44 to the 17, 37-yard punt or so? Yep, that's what I got. You know, I mentioned before the numbers, 11 seniors for KLC, just four juniors and three sophomores. Num numbers there are not good for the future. They got to do something about it. But you got to think about some of our schools here. Kohler uh, 
an excellent soccer program. They went to the state finals last year, so a lot of Kohler kids probably do that. Uh, we'll talk about Lutheran in a minute. Nava is still at the quarterback for the Rockets. They got a man in motion, fake to him, give it to the second back who gets crunched right at the line of scrimmage. That may have gone for a loss. I think that was stock again on the stop. Then you look at Lutheran, and they're a, a very strong cross country team over at Lutheran. They've had some good runners, and Kohler actually started the cross country team a year ago. So when you have small schools and kids are doing other things, you know, that it just there's so many kids to pull from. And Hurts your numbers. Yep. And uh, But right now you get four juniors and three sophomores at KLC. That is, that's an issue. And off. The running back was uh, Acevedo again. It's going to be third down. Only picked up about is it three or four yards? We'll give him four. And there's a break, water yeah, break. Yeah, we got a injured player. An injured player. So that's the kind of stuff I, you know, I worry about. Marty is, you know, if you want success here, it's like any place. You know, other schools can be successful in different programs. Um, I know Cedar Grove last year, their cross country team and their football team were really good. So it can be done. Well, let's check in enrollments uh, on my note sheet here. Cedar Grove Belgium only has 352 kids. They're in Division Five. Uh, the combined enrollments of uh, KLC is 518. The, uh, they compete in Division Four at least last year. Yep. You know, that's a little bit fluid depending on where they. Uh, 224 teams yeah. fall that they uh, select. They do a draw from three schools, so you gotta get the word out and the youth football out, and something that the Sheboygan schools really need to continue to get better at is you gotta start them young and get kids interested in playing. And uh, you know, KLC has to do it. North and South have to do it if there's gonna be success down the road. Uh, for the three uh, local s schools plus Kohler. Clock is running. There's uh, under 30 seconds left in the quarter. Handoff. Not much going on there. I believe that was a uh, new running back that time. It was uh, Caden Fisher. And uh, that will be the quarter. And that's the end of the quarter. We're at the end of three quarters of play at Ebon Field here in Kohler, Wisconsin with uh, Cedar Grove, Belgium on top, 30 to eight. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> find yours at discovertheforest.org. Total yardage that uh, quarter for uh, KLC. They had uh, 28 yards, 14 rushing, 14 passing. For uh, Cedar Grove, Belgium, they had no yards passing, but uh, 60 yards rushing. And uh, it's going to be uh, fourth down for the Rockets. K 
Kick is high, not real deep. Goes out of bounds around the 50 yard line. It depends where uh, the official Chuck Rogers finally spots and it's gonna be at the 46. So KLC gets it in great field position, Chris. Let's see if they can do something with it. The first and 10. Something's not right. Well, coming in a little bit late. There's a guard with no number. Yep. 63. We'll have to work on this next time. Updated. Roster. Knuth on the carry. Picks up uh, five yards on the carry. Bobby Michael, or Bobby Mitchell, now the quarterback, freshman. Number two, Marty. Oh, really? I think that's what I see. He's all a 5, 7, and off. 40. Knuth trying to get some room. Not a lot doing there. He did pick up, did pick up at least two before he's finally thrown back. Took a pretty good lick that time. So you want to play football. <laughs> Ball spotted at the 39. It's third down and three. Knuth is the up back. Give it to the second back, and there's a fumble. Let's see who's got it. Well, new quarterback, tough exchange, turnover. And Anzia signaling Cedar Grove Belgium has it, and they do. That's a tough break. Freshman to freshman, I think, on that exchange. Fumble. Nice. Well, the Rockets have it back with a 22 point lead. It's looking pretty good for them. Ball is going to be spotted at the uh, 37, Chris. Yeah, they need to be. They're not going to be throwing. Novice fakes to both backs and keeps it. He's got a first down and then some. Looked like he might have stepped out of bounds, but no call. He finally is out at about the 25. Make it the 23. Quite a run that time for uh, Michael Novice. Once again, he got outside and there's nobody there. Makes it look pretty easy, Marty. Yeah. 36 yard run. Longest gain of the night. He had that 32 yard touchdown pass, but uh, a run I should say by Novice. Gentius on the carry, we get a flag come in Finch is throwing back at about the 23 Knuth on the stop again we mentioned his name a number of times on defense Spot foul. Okay. March the 10 yards now. That uh, run by novice, Chris, I, I added up wrong. It's a 40 yard run. Ooh.
going to be first down in a bunch. Sturt. Gentiuson again, another nice run, picking up some good blocking. Hornacek on the stop from Kohler. Junior, 154, 5'11". O'Reilly, Hornacek on the stop. We're under nine and a half minutes. And this is tough for the KLC squad and the coaches. Don't have the ball and you're down 22. Right. And they're just running down your throat. A pitch out. Acevedo fumbled it but picks it back up, but he's hit for a loss. That's where the new turf helped the opponent. Yeah, and uh, that's a play they hadn't run all, uh, all game. Yeah. Loss of four. Your Grove taking their time in the huddle. Third, we got it down as 14, third and 14. They're running a lot of time, but they get it off. Yeah. That's a good call. Gentius right up the middle. Yeah. Picks up a few, not enough for the first down. Might as well run it, right, Chris? Yep. Now they might throw it just to keep the clock rolling. And Fourth and 12. Novice still at quarterback. Look out for him on a roll. He's got a man deep, fires it over the middle. And the catch is made. Oh, it's really short. <laughs> novice to novice. On the receiving end was Jacob. Uh, I got it as being Jacob Pfeiffer. What number? 15. Jacob Pfeiffer. That is a first down, Chris. What? Right at the no, marker. No. First and ten for KLC. Oh, okay. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it was a first down. It was. Who's that quarterback I this time? It's the same. I think they needed 11. It was only 10 yards. There's a good pass and catch. Making the grab that time was uh, Dave Beneshek. And Michael, the freshman. Still in the game, completes his first varsity pass. First and 10, KLC. First and 10 ball spotted at the 26 yard line. That's a 12 yard pickup. Michael, just a freshman, as we mentioned, from Sheboygan Lutheran. He's got a nice arm. Oh, Gravos. Braden Grabowski on a nice catch, and he's ripped down at about the 45-yard line. That was a nice pass and catch, too. Uh, young freshman thinks, eh, nothing to this. And I have big 6-3 targets out there. 25-yard play. 7.09 left. KLC on the march. First back through, it's knocked Ooh. down. Good play that time by uh, Noah Sanfilippo. Yep. Pick up a two on the play. Anzius 
coming up and now he drops back, but now he's coming right up the middle. And uh, Michael making a good run of it. Oh, he couldn't get it out wide and uh, it's like those rockets are all over the field, Chris. Loss of five on the play. All right, we got uh, third and 13. Ball's right on the 50 yard line. Michael rushed hard, he's not gonna get it off. Anzia on the sack. Who? Oh. <laughs> Did we mention his name before? Rockets not holding back. They're sending them linebackers. Going to be fourth and 24. Fourth punt of the night. No rush. Ford, one of the return men. He's the one that's going to get it. Going off to the right. They got a little bit of a wall set up. He gets around the corner. He's on the loose before he's finally stopped at about the 41 yard line, but a very nice return on that. Took it at around the 20. 10, 20, 30, almost 40 yard return. That'd be a good one to see again, Chris. First and 10 Rockets, who's the QB, Chris? Novice. Still in there, huh? They're gonna run and run and run. 4.32 left. Hand off Acevedo, he leans forward. He's gonna be close to the first down. I don't know if I'd keep him in the game too much off longer either. Why would you let your horse in there up by 22? Yeah. Under four minutes. Good point. You never know. Exactly right. Second down and one. Two year Grove Belgium taking their time in the huddle now, letting the clock run down. They might be uh, calling a timeout right yep. before the penalty. That's what it looks like. That's exactly what they do. Call the timeout. I know we've uh, mentioned this before, but we'll mention it again. Our next game will be next week when Bayport visits South. For our second game of the season, we look forward to bringing that to you. Maybe on Thursday, though. That'll be a Thursday game, August 23rd. Put that on your social calendar. We already have it on ours. Then the next week, South plays Pulaski. Pulaski beat Southwest yesterday, which uh, a little bit of an upset. Yeah, Southwest is. And I give been the crew better. a shout out. Uh, Robert Ingram is our director tonight. Uh, Richard Bartson running camera one up on top. Greg Zablocki uh, running camera two. Chris Wright doing the uh, color. And I am Mike Martin doing the play by play. <laughs> Scott Mailoff also stepped in to uh, get a set. He's not here tonight, but uh, he helped do, he did some of the troubleshooting early on to get us rolling. So big shout out goes to the crew and a big thank you. Novice. Acevedo again, he's got room to roam, and he is gonna be stopped inside the 15 yard line. 
Big gain for him. Well, I kept thinking all week, is, uh, am I ready for football? I guess now that I've experienced tonight, yeah, I am ready. It was yeah, it seems a little early, but uh, once the fans come out, and it's very enjoyable. I'm not a fan of the cold, so for me it was very pleasant being in shorts and a yeah, short really shirt. Really, I see you wore your shirt that you bought on vacation. Yep. Oh, ripped down and taken down as Acevedo back at the 15 yard line. That's a loss of one. Joe Conklin on the play. Rolling down to the uh, three minute mark left in the game. Yeah, I find it interesting, Chris, that uh, they're leaving all the starters in yeah. all the way to the end, and uh, you're right about the injury thing. Gentius is the other running back, by the way. Give it to Acevedo. He breaks loose. He's in for, in for a touchdown. Leaned forward for the first down, kept his feet, and dove in for the touchdown. Well... It's been all Alex Acevedo on this possession, Chris. 41 yards. Have a night, Alex. That just took a minute 59 off the clock. He hadn't scored yet, though, tonight. He's had a bunch of Yards on the ground, though. Sometimes those guys that gain a lot of yards in this, you know, in tonight's game, Acevedo, they kind of set things up for the other kids, you know, because you got to respect his running, and all of a sudden, oop, there's a long pass, or oop, yep. there's a run by the other guy. Yep. 30 unanswered, Marty. That's a lot. It was 8 to 7, way back at the 838 mark of quarter number two and uh, since that time it's been a lot of Cedar Grove and as Marty's mentioned a number of times that's why they're the champs that's for sure it'd be nice if uh, KLC could keep the ball these last couple minutes not have to give it up Let's see if they can get the offense rolling a little bit here. End on a positive note. We've seen some, some good things from KLC. A couple big plays, though, that really changed it. And hey, they have a good chance of uh, beating Oostburg next week. Yep. It's got to hang in there. Look at the positive parts of the film yep. tomorrow. And, and uh, Ragamoni walking the sideline, Chris, without his uh, yeah, shoulder pads. We basically never saw him tonight. Line drive taken at the 13-yard line. And leaning forward is the return man. Ooh, a little extracurricular at the end. Nope. Ball is returned by Campione. Campione on the return. First down, KLC. KLC will have it first and 10. Ball spotted on the 32. Michael comes back in. Michael's done a nice job, Chris. He's uh, gotten popped a couple times there. Cedar Grove is not uh, yeah. shutting the dogs down. No, they got, they still got their horses in there. First back through. Yeah, that was more of a base defense for them there. They weren't sending anybody that time. Play a straight defense. Hey, they don't have his name next door either. Ball carried by number 80. <laughs> no, I don't feel so bad, Chris. Get that man on the roster. Get some air time. First back through again. Uh, not much there. Filling the hole and making the stop was uh, Matthew Poole. 
third and five. One yard gain that time. Well, we're down to a minute and a half here, so. Michael takes the snap, second back through. Carter Knuth is it out to about the 39. Not much going there, one yard. Uh, they're saying Stefani on the carry. Coach Sablocki here running the clock down as well. He's just going to probably. Run a simple play here, and then uh, under a minute, down to 45 seconds. Two wide receivers in this set. Graydon Grabowski back down here on the bottom of your screen. First back through, gets hit right at the line of scrimmage and stopped for a loss. Back to the 39 yard, right, right at the line of scrimmage. Cedar Grove will take a knee and go to one and zero. Oh and like I said before, I thought KLC showed some nice things tonight. Look at the positive things. You are a couple plays away from uh, getting some early scores, and if you had some early stops, you never know, you know, what could happen. So take that, you know, to the well with you. And hey, Chris, here's your victory formation. You think they got seven guys on the line? <laughs> <laughs> That's just <laughs> brutal. <laughs> Let them run the play. They're going to kneel down for gosh sakes. That is not good. <laughs> that is not good at all. I'm not sure what the signal was. It looks like it could have been unsportsmanlike conduct. Uh, I would say that was not very appropriate. See if we can get it right this time, boys. There you go. Kneel down, clock running. That's going to be the ball game. Final is going to be Cedar Grove, Belgium, showing us why they were conference champs a couple of years and made it to the state finals. 37, KLC 8. Uh, they will be at uh, Oostburg next week. Cedar Grove, Belgium will trip up to uh, Mishkot for their second game. Chris, any comments? No, nope. I said what I was going to say. All right, Good next week tonight. we'll be at Bayport when they invade South for a 7 o'clock game. Uh, I want to thank the crew again for their job, and uh, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you all down the road.